you've ever had. What do you think? This is the earliest, yeah. Straight up. Hey, looking on the bright side. We should right? buy them yeah. something. Um, yeah, they can stay. They don't have to buy a ticket. <laughs> Free ticket. <laughs> Free tickets, how about that? Well, what are we expecting tonight? It's a little different than the last show. Yeah, this one's not free. Uh, different model. So, $10 tickets, not that bad. And it's dubstep instead of house. Which, you know, people are picky in, in dance music. Some people aren't, some people really are. So, we'll get a good crossover crowd, but there's definitely a bunch of people that I'm only seeing today because it's dubstep day. 100%. Yeah. Where, where do you sit on the dubstep house scale? Um, I'm really torn. Dubstep is my preference, like the power. Yes. Uh, but house, I have a lot of positive memories with, and it's more conducive for conversation and like, uh, yeah, like the energy mixing, people talking. Uh, dubstep grabs you and forces you to do yes. what it wants you to do. And house is like, do whatever you want. Woo! I'll be in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? I'm just about to hang out at a really sick bass show and I'm very excited about it. Have you been to a Defiance show before? Tons. This is probably like my 30th Defiance show. Okay, okay. What, what keeps you coming back again and again every time? It's really just like the underground community kind of comes alive at Defiance shows. I don't feel like it's as genuine other places because if it's bigger crowds it always just feels like an after where everybody's fucked up and if it's smaller crowds then nobody's really dancing it's like the perfect yeah. medium totally that's cool i would agree for sure what's uh No, no, no. 18 years old. How old are you? Oh, 18. I'm Actually, 20. don't say that. Oh. Oh. What's the scoop? I've What's seen scoop? You, I've seen you at these defined shows quite a bit, you know. Yeah, we're at underground corrupt. No, corrupt. <laughs> we're at a corrupted underground volume three right now. Okay. With defiance putting it on, of course. And what does that what does that mean for the the people coming here tonight? What should they expect with a corrupted underground? Some crazy dubstep mm. rhythm, all the bass you could ever want. Oh, huh. How how long have you been uh, tied up with these Defiance boys? You know, you've kind of been here off rep, some might say. Well, I've known Asher for a long time, and uh -huh. then I met the boys through him, and then everyone else, the fams. What who, what what is the fam? You know, I. Like... I mean, we were Defiance was basically created a little over two years ago by now, so been going for a couple years. And totally, totally. We just started the promotion group not that long ago. Nice. So, where where are you like a like a key player like a in the promo one. group? Yeah, because you seem pretty serious. I'm the lead. Huh? <laughs> What'd you say? I am head of promo. Oh. oh shit. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. I don't think hell about yeah. it. I don't think hell about yeah. it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. What the, what the drinks be out of pity? No, he's my man. Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, are you tired? Do you feel bad about yourself now? Honestly, like, do you feel like you kind of? I can't get up? if I'm here. That's true. Thank God you have a. No. I need. Well, I don't know if that's available either. Honestly. This shit needs to be deleted. <laughs> Oh my god, hurry. What? Tell me a secret. Hi. That was a shitty secret. I know. Okay, so you just played a set. You're feeling hot, you're looking hot. Oh yeah. Give us a scoop. Act like I'm blind and don't know anything. What do you go, 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 go by? I go by Bogo. Mm. My real name is Jack. Okay. Uh, I mix rhythm. <laughs> How'd you come up with Bogo? Um, my girlfriend just called me that randomly and it just kind of stuck. And then it grew into a buy one, get one type thing. So mm -hmm. decided to do more of like a angelic demon type set so like you get two of two of the same thing into one like totally you buy one and you get one exactly what's what's coming up next for you musically um, or even just life shit sometimes we just a, a lot of practice in the mixing zone um trying to work on some new music i'm not really in the right headspace for that right now but trying to practice the mixing so I can be better at that um, but yeah I don't really have too much going on besides the show that's so yeah, this is my first show ever so oh really yes oh yeah. yeah okay so first show ever I would imagine you know you kind of had some uh, expectations or things you were curious about like what what would that be and how did that end up playing out actually so this is my first time ever touching the cdj just, nice and um i expected to play some some most of my tunes but uh, my files got corrupted on my on my uh, usb totally and i had to um just play singles the whole time and that just really put me down in the dumps because I knew I was messing up but nobody knew that. That's that's real dude, like in my experience your set was fluid as fuck. And it's so trippy, I feel like so many DJs are like, oh I fucking goofed it or whatever and it's like I never can tell, you know? I had like 14 songs on my USB that were working and all the other ones were corrupt. Oh damn. Yeah. And, That's um, crazy, so I just actually. Those, yeah, I just played those singles, right, just to get that get that time. And then I was like, Landon told me earlier, like, hey, if you need, like, I'll give you my my USB to play some rhythm songs. So as soon as I got done with my songs, I called him over and asked him to do that, and worked out in my favor. Totally, I would say, I would say so for sure.
keep it going? How should we Man, keep it going? Everyone's wondering what you're still doing here. Honestly, I don't even yeah. want to be here. Not him complaining. Yeah. I don't even want to be here. Yeah, I know. Do, do you want him here? No. Fuck that. Fucking sucks. Uh, if only he would walk a few steps further. Let's go! All right, Mr. Headliner, huh? Have yeah. you ever headlined before? A couple times. Oh, a couple times. So you've, you've nothing, pretty much been crazy. on. Right. I would say it's kind of crazy. Most yeah, people can't crazy. say they headlined. Yeah, yeah it feels crazy internally. It feels crazy. You shake before you go up. I don't care. I'll do that on not a headline. I'll I'll do that for two people. I'll. Stick. <laughs> yeah. I get anxious. I get anxious. How, how did you feel your set went? Um, like, you know, how was the crowd energy? How are you feeling? Well, it's crazy because this is the dichotomy of being the artist and then being the fan because I was stressing the whole fucking time. And up there, I kept looking out. And then if you're stressing while you're on stage, all you see is the bad shit out of stage. So I just tried to focus in. But hopping off stage, Everybody I've talked to loved it, if that makes sense. It's the dichotomy of like uh, my expectations of like stress versus yes. their expectations of a good time. And then they have a good time and they love it. And then at the end of the night, it's always good. So fucking push through your fears. Uh, play headline if you can, play good shows. 100%, hell yeah. What, like when you're getting on stage, because I would imagine this isn't the first time you've been kind of stressed and then you hop off and everyone's like, yo, that was dope. So it's like, do you think that makes you like a better like like a, a better set slash performance when you're a little stressed? Or mm. would you is that something you would like to eliminate? Question mark? Or do you like it? Yes and no. I think I do feel more anxiety than I would like when I hop on stage most of the times because it's counterproductive. I think a little bit of anxiety is good because it means you care about it. It pushes you to, to be a little bit amped and to get into it and focus so you don't mess up on the first little bit, but I would take off a little bit of the edge. I think it's uh, the practice that gives you the taking off of the edge. I don't think the edge disappears, but the controlling of the edge happens the more you perform. Totally. And this is a headline, I haven't headlined for a little bit, so I had a little bit more edge, but the more you perform, the less of an edge there is, but there's always an edge, if that makes sense. Totally, yeah, 100%. Yeah. But you want the edge, or else you're sloppy. Totally. Do you, like when you practice for your set, do you freestyle during the set or do you have it like pretty planned out or like a mix? I will do, depending on the set, I'll kind of do either. But for like the past two years, my sets are like 100% planned because I do all original for the most part. Tonight's set wasn't 100% original on purpose to like mix it up for myself yes. for my creative shit. But normally it's 100% original, so I'll co compile it. I'll like uh, do like I'll do multiple sessions where I like test out tracks in a row in my DAW, 
and then plan out how it'll work and then I'll produce tracks to fill in the emptiness so I can do all original sets. Damn. So on, on a normal time, I practice a lot and I do a lot of prep work. But if I was just to play like a party, then I'd have a playlist and just do, just mixing just offhand. Yeah, that totally. Makes if that That's makes sense. That's cool, 100%. Uh, I feel like your music definitely is made to be played all together in a set, right? It's like, that's kind yeah. of how you've designed it. Yes, I would say I've designed tracks to fill in gaps, but I would also say mixing your own music into your own music is like the hardest fucking thing. It shouldn't be that hard, but you take so much pride in your music that you want to show off your intros, you want to show off your outros, you want to show off like the little thing that you put time into that the crowd doesn't give a shit about, if that makes sense. Totally. So you have to train yourself to know that cr I love this, and I hope the listener loves this, but the crowd doesn't love this, if that makes sense. So producing with your own music is actually hard because you have to like cut out all your favorite like all your favorite shit basically like oh this sound that I made is the coolest thing ever yeah, but totally. it happens before the drop that mixes well so the crowd doesn't care mm. about the sound they care about the drop that mixes well if that makes sense yeah totally so yeah, 100%. yeah so it's, it's, a, it's a toss up it's a lot it's a lot easier to mix other people's music because you don't have that tie to it yeah so you just kind of throw whatever together 100% that, that totally makes sense uh, what do you have like Moving forward from tonight, what can people start expecting from you? Music, always. Uh, I don't know, Doppelganger, D-A-W-P-L-E-G-V-G-V-N-G-E-R on all platforms. I don't know, I post on most platforms most of the time. I have music coming out consistently, so. Oh yeah. That's it. That's cool. 100%. And, uh, you know, what's your favorite snack? Because people have my been asking. My favorite snack, like, dude. It, Me and my girlfriend have a joke about this, actually, because she went to a party one time and got it. My favorite snack, that is. And then came home and explained it to me. And then I explained it back to her as various meats and cheeses. That's my shit, dude. A good charcuterie board. <laughs> yeah. Cheese and meat. That is, that's my favorite part of my entire diet. Cheese and meat. 100%. That's my shit. So that's a, that's a good question. That works well for me. Huh. You, and you know everything about me. You? Pretty you're pretty, no, you, you, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, people might say you're a, a meat maestro. A meat maestro. The problem is I'm also a cheap motherfucker. So to be a maestro, you have mm. to have access to really high quality meats, which I only get on my birthday, basically. That's, yeah. that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So I like I like a good fucking any meat. Yes. So I, I wouldn't Large call myself a maestro small. though, because half the time when it's in my mouth, I can't I can't tell the difference. Same with cheeses, dude. Uh, it, it's just good. It's just good. It's just good. It's like you're not you're not thinking about the the class or the quality. You're thinking about the sensation you have. Yeah, dude. That's it. Yeah, the sensation and the fulfillment in my gut. Huh. That's it, dude. That's yeah. It. Me, me and cheese. That's a good snack because those give both. Somebody could say Cheetos, but it doesn't give you the sensation of fullness. No, That's meats no. and cheeses, variously. That's what that is. It, it's a dense full. Yeah. It's like sometimes you eat an entire loaf of sourdough bread, and sometimes you go hard on a charcuterie. And when you do both, holy fuck. Dude, that's too much. That's too much. My gut was mad. What's the situation, boss? One word to describe your level of horniness. Trying to go to the bathroom. What? I said you're trying to go to the bathroom right now. That's pretty fucking horny. I was up at 4 a.m. this morning. I'm dying. How horny are you because of your tiredness? Zero percent. 100% flaccid right now. Don't talk to me. <laughs> All I want to do is sleep. But this music be vibing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
What's the scoop? You just killed an awesome <laughs> ass set. I, I heard that it was your first public event. Is it's that... technically my second real public event. My okay. first was last June um, with the High Life crew. Okay, uh, fucking Carson yeah. and those boys. But um, yeah, this is my first like real on my own. I don't know anybody here. Okay, <laughs> so hell it feels yeah. Good. How yeah. did you like get a... Uh... I guess like introduced or who do you know uh, from Defiance? Uh, they just reached out to fucking you. Fucking just through Facebook's like algorithm, man. Oh, like really? I saw more people popped up and more people added me until I finally found that Defiance was doing open decks. And within the last three years, oh. I was inspired into electronic yes. music, and so kind of. I feel on like that. okay. Did you play open decks here? Yeah, I've done okay, it like four word. or five times. <laughs> okay, word. I'm like you do yeah, look like familiar. Quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, hell yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I feel like your the open decks that I saw of you was more like housey. No, nah, that, definitely okay, deep though. Then no, some fucking some tripping. shit from across the pond. I like the 140 grime stuff. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's chill. Yeah. How long have you been a uh, DJing and whatnot? Uh, as far as DJing, about two-ish years. As far as producing, I've been doing it for about three. Okay, hell yeah. Years. That's yeah. cool. And do you produce like the deep bass shit? Yeah, yeah. The last like. 15 minutes of the set was all original shit from Hell yeah. uh, the first one I played to introduce the end of the set was something my brother made um, that he actually pulled up and just fucking gave me this USB with a single track on it. Nice, and, okay. Uh, so that was lit. And so I got to introduce with my brother's song and then play the last like 10 minutes of my set were just all original tracks. Nice. The last so. 10 minutes was like, that was a different ass vibe. So yeah. that was cool. Yeah, that's uh, cool. I like not knowing when people's originals are. Yeah, right. And then finding out later being like, know. okay, <laughs> dope, yeah. No, it was cool. Like the, the last 10 minutes I feel like was like the most uh, like comfortable, you know? Yeah. For, right. like, everyone felt like they were hanging out and shit. That's cool, so. man. It's because that's what we were talking about earlier. Is the homie fucking. Uh, he was Fuck saying it's a, it's a homie ass set tonight. Totally. That's what he said. And that's what it felt like. It felt like a lot of old friends, even though, like, I haven't talked to a lot of these people before. And mm -hmm. so it was cool to come in and just feel, like, welcomed with the Defiance crew and totally. hang out, right? They're hella cool. Yeah. What did you think about. I mean, I you just said they're welcoming, but, uh, like, what, what about Defiance stands out to you? I think it's rad that you just throw an event and anybody can fucking pull up and play on the decks. Okay, Open decks oh yeah. is what's important. I think it's just, it's it's crucial to finding new talent and I don't know, it gives me an opportunity to fucking play shows like this. I like, 100%. I want to hear my shit on big speakers. Yeah, totally. Hell yeah. Okay. What's, uh, what's coming up next for you as far as like the next <sighs> time? Sitting in the chair again. I'll probably make some more music. Um, probably have some releases soon. Uh, yeah, hopefully more shows. Hell yeah. And uh, one thing you wish you could tell the entire world if given the opportunity. You can be anything by just fucking doing it. Don't be lazy. Huh. If you want to be a DJ, go DJ. If you want to be a painter, go paint. Pussy. What, what's something <laughs> that helps you stay motivated? Like not be lazy. I think it's remembering why you do shit. Because like it... I, I feel art is such a, a an important and crucial thing about the human experience, and I don't know, if you're not partaking in that, you might be missing out a little bit. 100%. Oh yeah. Um, where can people find your shit? Are you on SoundCloud? On SoundCloud. Okay. You can find me on SoundCloud. Don't find me on Facebook, because okay. I ain't got no Facebook yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you can find me on Instagram at Scoundrel Music. Probably rebrand to Scoundrel Sound soon, because that just sounds better in my head. Yeah. Big success, bad success. What's the what's the motherfucking scoop? Describe it like I'm blind. Uh, it was <laughs> it was dark. It was dank. It was beautiful. And uh, we're just really dialing in like the 
schedule of vibes. You know, when to go hard, yeah. when to have somebody just. just yeah. We did. We executed on that concept. Amazing. I say we, but the DJs yeah. themselves. You know, the event, really the, but the whole from like a masterminded standpoint. Yeah. Uh, feels good. Victory. Yeah. On, on a scale one to ten, how bricked are you right now? <laughs> Max, because of the show. <laughs> maximum. Nice. So maximum you're, you're pushing 10.5 is what I'm hearing. 10.5. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Oh yeah? One word to describe the show, mister. Fucking lit as fuck. Man, that was like five words, but I understand. <laughs> well, fucking. That, that, that's fucking. Okay. That's kind of inappropriate. <laughs> Honestly. Not YouTube appropriate. <laughs> Here, how about, how about flipping? Flipping. That sucks. We're back to fucking. 